The Dendro Archon Nahida is finally out, and this is an honest look at how she works with different teams and weapons at Constellation Zero. So, here's exactly what you need to know about her in this showcase video. So, I'm actually impressed how interesting Nahida is. I think she's basically the Archon of Elemental Reactions. In fact, without reactions, she's almost useless. Because her normal attacks hit like a wet noodle, her skill won't generate particles, and her burst, well, as pretty as it is, it only powers up her skill. However, plug in any Dendro or even regular reaction we're used to, and suddenly she's this insane Dendro applicator that not only empowers existing team comps, but I was also able to build new and strong teams that have never existed before. But let me show you her personal performance first. In this free-to-play showcase, she's using a fully refined Mappa Mari, although Magic Guide can work as a cheaper alternative, and her artifact set is Deepwood Memories. But I'll talk about Gilded Dream's potential later on in the video. Also, her talents are 8, 8, 6, and she's level 90. Now, starting off with her normal attacks, even powered up with Mappa Mari's passive effect and Deepwood Memories' Dendro Resistance Shred, they still hit for very low numbers, ranging between 1.7 and 2.8. 8,000. It probably comes with no surprise by this point, but these numbers will become better once she can utilize the Quicken reaction. Now, her elemental skill has two modes, tap and hold. The tap version has a very small circular range that will hit and mark enemies, and the damage is about 3,200, while the hold version puts her into this sort of like photo mode, where up to eight targets can be marked with the square in the middle, and it deals about 4,200 damage. It's actually super easy to mark enemies on screen. For example, in this abyss chamber here, I can just flick from left to right and all seven enemies here become marked. It's really easy and satisfying to do it. Now, what's the deal with this marking? Well, when an enemy is marked and they suffer from a reaction, Nahida will unleash her Tri-Karma Purification attack. It will deal a significant amount of damage, and the best part, every enemy who's marked will suffer from this attack, even if it causes reactions to only one of them. This damage ranges from 11,000 to 25,000 if it's a spread reaction when the enemy is quickened. And finally, her burst. She creates this gigantic palace field, but it doesn't actually deal damage because the only thing it does is empower her Tri-Karma, depending on what teammates she's with. By default, her Tri-Karma can be triggered every 2.5 seconds, and the burst lasts 15 seconds. However, Electro teammates will reduce the trigger interval, Hydro teammates will increase burst duration, and finally, Pyro teammates will increase Tri-Karma's damage. And these bonuses become stronger if you, for example, have two Electro teammates, making her Tri-Karma interval shorter than with one. Basically, if her team is made up of one Electro, one Hydro, and one Pyro teammate, like this Burgeon team here, she will get each benefit that's being highlighted here. So, with all of this taken into account, I wanted to see how good Nahida's on-field damage potential is with reactions. By using two Electro teammates, her Tri-Karma would activate roughly every two seconds when her burst is deployed. So, in 15 seconds, she was able to achieve roughly 365,000 damage. Honestly, for a single target, it's average at best, but keep in mind when multiple enemies are marked by her skill, her damage potential becomes quite better. In fact, she was able to do roughly 13 spreads until her burst ended and trigger a total of 5 Tri-Karmas. Her normal attack animations are quite fast as well, so even with ICD, they trigger spreads easily, and best of all, her skill has no ICD. So basically, it would be about 19 and 33,000 damage from her hold skill and Tri-Karma both both activating at the same time, and both becoming spread damage, resulting in about 52k damage combined every single time. Now, it's also important to understand both her passives. The first one, well, basically 25% or up to 250 EM will be provided from the highest elements of Mashview party member to an active character when Nahida's burst is deployed. So when I was showcasing Nahida's damage during her burst, Raiden in the party had 1000 EM. So the max amount of 250 elemental mastery was utilized by Nahida and she ended up with almost 850 EM. Now the second passive is extremely important. After the first initial 200 EM Nahida has, every next one point will increase your Tri-Karma's bonus damage and critical rate by small amount shown here. However, at 1000 Elemental Mastery, which is the max amount of this passive she can cash in, her Tri-Karma will gain 80% bonus damage and 24% increased critical rate. That's insane value, and reaching this 1000 threshold is going to be the focus of many of her builds, especially since her first passive can grant up to 250 EM anyway.
anyway. Obviously, you'll still want things like healthy critical ratio, but for off-field Nahida, where her only source of damage is Tri-Karma anyway, this passive really makes it easy to see those critical damage numbers. All in all, Nahida's single target damage potential is decent at best, but she shows really good results with multiple enemies, because by holding down her skill, you can quickly mark up to 8 enemies on screen with just a single flick, and because her both passives focus on elemental mastery, her tri karma spread damage is quite high, and even her on-field potential is pretty decent with those normal attacks, which hit very fast and can reset the ICD within few moments. But honestly, her personal potential is just not something that I would put too much focus on, because her true value is the super consistent denture application, which I think it's about time to showcase in this next part. Just like with every other showcase video, keep an eye on the bottom of the screen to see what loadout and stats Nahida has. Now, the amount of team comps I've tested and found success was pretty crazy. Like, I'm talking about 10 to 15 team variations, all of which performed really well. For example, this Hyper Bloom team comp utilizes Elemental Mastery Raiden, while Yelan and Xingqiu provide raw hydro damage support. Here, Nahida stays on field and constantly keeps applying a dendro on enemies, resulting in many blooms and spreads. Even with just 105% ER, I had no issues having constant uptime with Nahida's burst, because because her Trike Armor generates 3 Dendro Particles, and since 2 Hydro teammates are in the composition, her burst lasts more than 22 seconds. This team alone is pretty insane, and I think Nahida shines best when she can utilize both Quicken and Bloom reactions. But what about existing Quicken teams? Well, one character that comes to mind is Sino. Previously, there were some problems with extending Quicken on enemies when using Dendro Traveler. However, Nahida has made it very simple thanks to her insane 25 second skill duration. Her Tri Karma will constantly reapply Dendro, and Sino now can effortlessly cause aggravate damage. Also, keep in mind when Nahida's burst is deployed, since Sino will be the active character most of the time, he will also gain that EM from her first passive. So in this case, Nahida had the most EM and 25% of it was given to Sino, letting him cause better aggravate reaction damage. I also wanted to see how good is on-field quick in Nahida. This team is made up of Fischl, Yaimiko, and Jean. I used the Dandelion girl here because I had some problems surviving on the second side of Chamber, and she proved to be very useful. And just as I expected, even with the eyes and Fischl's aggravated damage, on-field Nahida and Quicken team against single targets like Mago Kenki or the new Desert boss wasn't extremely good, but it got the job done. Again, Nahida shines best with multiple targets, and to be frank, it was never that hard to upkeep Quicken Aura on enemies before Nahida came into the picture. Now, on the other hand, fast and efficient Dendro application is something that was missing for Nilo's bountiful core teams. I'm actually amazed just how well Nahida can keep the Dendro application going just by herself when there's 3 Hydro units in the team. In fact, most of the triggers were coming from Hydro characters like Nilo or Kokomi, so the blooms were especially strong, reaching almost upwards of 40,000 damage. And funny enough, since Nahida stays on the field when explosions are happening, she's a squishy character, so I actually used both Barbara and Kokomi to keep her alive. Probably an overkill, but they both had slow and steady Hydro application, so it was easy to produce blooms with them along with Nilo. I would probably say at this point, bountiful core teams with Nahida feel much more consistent, and just with this one change alone, I was already able to see better bloom damage thanks to Nahida's Dendro application. Now, if you've been trying to build Virgin teams, well, I have good news. With Nahida, who yet again acts as an on-field driver, her Dendro normal attacks and Tri Karma from the skill is enough to finally achieve some consistency. With Xingqiu, Fischl, and Toma, I was able to get really good results. Although, it is important to note Toma's high burst cost, so I actually gave Nahida Favonius Codex, so she could help with these energy issues, and that was enough to activate the housekeeper's burst off cooldown and see those explosions go off. But this got me thinking, if Nahida can finally help with Burgeon, what about burning? See, the thing is, if an enemy is burning, you can do some shenanigans like create melt reactions with a, oh, I don't know, certain Coco Goat, and if that's not enough, this melt reaction is enough for Tri Karma to activate, because it specifically says in the skill's fine print, any reaction cost to an enemy is good enough to trigger Tri Karma, and it just so happens if an enemy is already burning, and Tri Karma deals dendro damage, well, it's like adding wood to a bonfire, it will keep on burning. So, lo and behold, we have the Fire Goat team with Benny Boy, Zhongli, and Ganyu. 
Basically, I use Benny's skill in Burst to apply Pyro on enemies, then Nahida's skill marks the enemies, and then you can go crazy with Gani and deal some huge charge shot damage. Melts will just trigger Nahida's Tri-Karma and replenish Burning on target. Obviously, Burning will subside after a few charge shots, so going back to Benny and Nahida to reapply is a must, but besides that, this team is really fun to use, and I'm glad to see we can finally have some Dendro and Pyro teams working with Nahida. Oh, and if you haven't noticed, Nahida is using her Thrilling Tails to boost Ganyu's damage. Although I'm not sure if this is the best weapon for the Archon, but it's almost a classic to have a Thrilling on a Catalyst at some point in their life. Also, she's using Gilded Dreams so she can provide bigger EM boost to Ganyu, and since Nahida triggers burning most of the time, her elemental mastery is taken into account for how much the target burns. Honestly, I could keep going on with just how many different teams you can build with this tiny Archon, but I think you get the idea already, her Dendra application is just so good. Even new team comps can be created with her. I think another big takeaway from these showcases is that Nahida has many different weapon choices. Sometimes it will depend on the situation, but nonetheless, even with something like fully refined Mapamari, she can utilize it super well when she's on field. So, what do I think about this newest Archon? Honestly, she made me appreciate Genshin's combat system even more than I'm used to. Like, we already had Dendro Traveler, who was just fine with enabling plenty of Quicken and Bloom teams. But it's pretty clear by now, what was lacking for some of these teams was the Dendro application consistency. Basically, Nahida can apply a lot of it when she's on field, mostly thanks to the fact she's a Catalyst user, although obviously when you're using her off field, her Dendro application is better than Traveler's, but not by a lot. Although there's no circle you need to dance around, and enemies just remain marked for a very long time instead. Speaking of which, you gotta appreciate how cool and interesting her skill is. Outside combat, you can pick up a lot of materials by just holding it down, and you can even read certain NPCs' minds if you want to learn more about the game's world. I think it's one of the coolest things Hoyaverse came up with so far, and I really appreciate her unique design. Although, I can say the same for her running animation, which sadly got recycled from other tiny characters. Now, one thing got me thinking. If Venti is the ultimate crowd controller when enemies can be grouped, Zhongli is the ultimate shielder, and Raiden is the ultimate energy battery with scary and swift damage potential, what is Nahida the ultimate of? Right now, I think she's the ultimate Dendro applicator, as long as she's on field, and I guess you could say she's also the ultimate elemental mastery provider for the active character? I don't know. She feels like this hybrid Archon that's hard to describe, but she also feels really useful and has this fluid utility. Still, I would say if you already have Dendro Traveler and mostly want to build Quicken teams, then I don't believe Nahito offers that much unless you have Sino. I really think she best shines in Quick Bloom or basically any Bloom teams like Bird Virgin, Hyper Bloom, and Bountiful Course. This was the missing link that either enabled or empowered Bloom teams thanks to Nahida's on-field Dendro application combined with her Tri-Karma attacks. All in all, I'm happy with how she turned out, and I expect to see a lot of new and improved teams surfacing to the top thanks to this new Dendro Archon. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate if you could press the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.